Welcome to part nine, our final part for this beautiful project. We are going to, for the first step, be attaching these motives to the main part of the blanket, as you see on some of mine here. We will be attaching these with or from the wrong side, but I just want to take a moment to look at it from the right side so you can understand how we are joining these. So we will have the pico pointing down into this sort of valley between these other two motives, and it will get attached to this double crochet that we made there. And then you can see how we work up the sides here, that chain one in the side of our motive from last week will be joined to the top of this motive on both sides. We're also going to be working up seven stitches on the sides and joining those to each other as well. So I'm going to walk you through this step by step. In between the pico and the chain one space, there are 11 stitches, just as you will find between the double crochet and the double crochet worked in the center of this other motive. There's 11 stitches between there. So those 11 stitches will match up on both of these sides. So we're going to turn our work now to the wrong side. Okay, so my wrong side of my motive, the long tail is to the left. And I have the um, wrong side of the main piece here. Now for left-handed, you'll be opposite. So we position the pico by that double crochet between these points. So this is around 77. We want to find in this right hand side, the point at the top, that center half double crochet. And we will connect the right hand chain one to that with a stitch marker. We are not going to be joining all of this motive at this point. We will do that once we've worked all the way around. So this is for the first motive only. We attach with a stick mo stitch marker. Take a stitch marker in that double crochet between the points on the main blanket and then through the pico of our motive. And again, there's 11 stitches on both of these pieces between those stitch markers. Okay, and I'm just going to mark that center half double crochet and the other point and taking our long tail we will thread that tail onto our darning needle. We want to slip stitch this chain one space of the motive on that side point. Or stitch the chain one space into that marked tip of the point. And then we can remove the marker there. To get ready to join the second motive, we want to weave up the side seven stitches. So this is the chain one space here. Sometimes I like to look on the front to see where the top of my stitch is. Sometimes when I'm working on the back, I get confused which part is the top for this first stitch. So I'm just kind of using that third extra loop. One stitch, two stitch. Three, four, five, and six, and then into that seventh stitch. So now my thread and my needle are positioned properly to begin sewing the next motive together. So we're going to take that next motive So taking the next motive, I have my wrong side facing, the tail is to the left. 
chain one space of the corner and we want to count back seven stitches now when i'm counting this one if i turn to the right side the top loops of the stitch are here so that's where i'll count one two three four five six and seven so i want to stitch these together so you can insert your needle through both of the top loops of the stitches for a really tight join or if you prefer you can just use the back loops of each stitch and then we'll just do those seven stitches working our way back down to this point so that was one sometimes i have to double check where my yarn's coming through i've used this stitch already so two three four five six and seven stitches and then we want to put a stitch through the chain one of both of those motives as well. Okay, and I'm just going to flip this over so you can see those are joined nice and tightly. Okay, and that's what it looks like when you use both loops. So it's a nice tight join. You can do the back loops only. It's a little bit of a looser look, but as we put on the border, it'll snug that together a bit more. So then we want to come down. We've done the chain one space. So again, if I look from the right side, my loops of the stitch are here. So this will be my first set of loops to use. And we've worked into that top peak. So I want to use this next set of loops here. And we'll do 11 stitches. So one, two, three, four, nine, ten, and eleven stitches. And again, from the right side, you can see that attached nicely. So we should have reached the pico now on the motive and that center double crochet. So in through the top of the double crochet and through the pico to join those together. And then we'll work up this next side to that next chain one corner and the top peak. Again, it should be 11 stitches. One, two, Ten, and 11 stitches again which should be ending just before that chain one space and that center half double crochet we can go ahead and weave in this tail. So I've just popped the stitch marker in that center stitch once more just so it's easier to see on the video. 
We'll take this tail now from the motive that we just joined. We want to go into that chain one space and secure it to that stitch where the marker is. And then you can go ahead and move that marker as well. Now we want to go up our seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven stitches. So I'm in position to use this stitch here and then we need to grab our next motive so we'll take our next motive now the long tail on the left side i have gone ahead and marked my seventh stitch up the side so now i can begin joining from my current motive to the next motive those seven stitches and again you can move Remove the stitch markers as you work. So that's one, two, six, and seven. Stitches joined on those motives. And again, we just want to secure those chain one together. And then working down the side on the blanket towards that double crochet, we'll stitch those 11 stitches join the pico to the double, and so on. So we want to work our way around attaching all of these motives in the same way. I will join you just at the end of the round to show you how we work attaching to the first one and finishing that off. So you can go ahead and work those now. So I've worked my way around. The final eye spot has been joined from this side and around the bottom. So now we can take that tail and work in the same way around the first motive that we secured with stitch markers and joined our second motive too. So taking our long tail again, we want to secure this last motive through the chain one and that double crochet, and then weave up the seven stitches. Six, and then my seventh stitch. I will join to my seventh stitch here. Okay, so you're just going to connect this last motive down those seven stitches, the chain ones, the 11 stitches, the pico, the 11 stitches, and fasten off. And then you can sew in any remaining ends and meet me back here for the rest of the border. Round 83, we're going to have the right side facing our work and using color B. At the top of any eye spot, we want to find that double crochet and slip stitch into it. Chain one, 
we'll place a half double crochet and single crochet in that same stitch. Single crochet in the next 12 stitches. One, two, Eleven and twelve single crochet. So now we want to work a single crochet two together. So we'll insert in this next stitch to pull up a loop, and then we want to insert in the thirteenth stitch before the double crochet of the next motive. So that is going to be, you can sort of see here on the join that I've used this stitch here. So it'll be that next stitch on the next motive. I like to make sure I'm pulling that in tight so it doesn't stretch and it closes in that motive. Single crochet two together. So I'll do that one more time. In the next stitch on this first motive to pull up a loop, and in that 13th stitch before the double crochet on the next motive, insert, pull up a loop tight. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops for that single crochet, two together. Single crochet in the next 12 stitches. That's two and three. Eleven and twelve, which should bring us to that double crochet at the top of the motive. Single crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, all in that same double crochet. And we're just going to repeat that all the way around. On the last repeat, You'll stop before that final single crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, and I'll meet you at that spot. Single crochet in 12, single crochet two together, single crochet in 12, and then the single crochet, half double, single crochet in the top of the point. Okay, so you can work that and I'll join you just at the end of the round. So as we're finishing up these last few stitches, I've worked my 12 single crochet and I've come to our starting point. We want to add one more single crochet into that same stitch and then join to the top of our half double crochet. With a slip stitch, but do not fasten off. Round 84, we have made it to the very last round of this crochet along. We will chain one single crochet in that same stitch. So we're going to work a stitch now. Excuse me if I pronounce it wrong. The trefoil. It's a three part stitch. So from the single crochet we just made, we will chain four and then slip stitch back in the single. So I go in that front loop and that first side leg with my hook to make the slip stitch. Then we'll chain six. Slip stitch back in that same single crochet chain four, one more slip stitch back in that same single crochet. Trefoil the three flowered stitch with those chains and slip stitch in the single crochet. 
single crochet in the next stitch. Skip two stitches, we'll place a shell in that next stitch. So that's a double crochet, chain one, four times. It's once, double crochet, chain one twice. Three times, and four double crochet, chain one, all in that same stitch. We'll place one more double in that same stitch. The shell is made with five double crochet with the chain one space in between them. So there's four chain ones. Skip the next two stitches, single crochet in the next. And we'll repeat that. Skip two stitches, shell in the next. Double crochet, chain one, four times. Two. three, four, and one more double crochet all in that same stitch, chain two, or skip two stitches, single crochet in the next, which should be that last stitch just before the single crochet two together. Then we want to single crochet in the 13th stitch from that half double crochet on the next eye spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So it should be the single crochet just after that single crochet two together. We single crochet in there. Skip two stitches, work a shell. Double crochet, chain one, four times all in that next stitch. One more double crochet in the same stitch. Skip two stitches, single crochet in the next. Repeat, skip two, shell in the next. That's four double crochet, chain one, plus one more double. Skip two, single crochet in the next. And that should be that last single crochet before the half double crochet. We'll single crochet in that half double and start again with the trefoil. So I'll work that one more time with you. So chain four, slip stitch in that single crochet we just made. Chain six. Slip stitch back in that same single crochet, chain four, slip stitch back in that same stitch, single crochet in the next, then we'll skip two, work a shell twice, sorry, we'll skip two, work a shell, Four double crochet, chain one, and one more double in the same stitch. Skip two, single. Skip two, shell. Skip two, single crochet. Single crochet in that 13th stitch before the next half double crochet. Skip two, shell. Skip two, 
skip two, single crochet. Skip two, shell. Skip two, single crochet. Single crochet in that half double crochet. Ready to begin again. So we're going to work that repeat all the way around. I will join you just at the end of our last repeat. So I've worked my final repeat here. After the last shell, we skip two stitches, single crochet in the next stitch, and then we'll join to that starting single crochet before finishing off. So then just a finishing note after you've weaved in all your ends, um, you may want to um, do some blocking. The designer recommends that she put her blanket or her afghan in the washer on a gentle cycle, laid it out on a carpeted floor, and then gently smoothed it out by hand and let dry overnight. So rather than thinking of a blocking, you might want to think of it as just sort of manipulating the stitches and they will all lay flat where some of these sewn joins are. It'll just help the stitches to sort of wiggle and um, lay properly and lay flat. <clears throat> so if you wish, you can go ahead and do that. Many thanks to our designer and for everybody for following along with me. Enjoy your finished projects.